Factors and products. We start off with some definitions because we need to know definitions because the questions are going to say, can you list the multiples of, and if you don't know what multiple means, the question is going to be very hard. So a multiple, a number that can be divided by another number. So for example, 12 is a multiple of 2. If we wanted to list all the multiples of 2, you would get 2, 4, 6, 8. Can you see that all of these numbers could be divided by 2, including 2? They are considered the multiples of 2. If you wanted to say the multiples of 1, that is pretty easy to count by as 5s. Multiples of 5, 5, 10, 15, 20. And the reason I was thinking of that is earlier I talked about how important your times table is going to be. If you want to do a little exercise to improve your times table, it's a very simple idea, but it's called skip counting. How fast can you count by twos? How fast can you count by threes? How fast can you count by sevens? 7, 14, 21, 28, 35. If you can count really quickly by them, you know your times table for sevens really well. If it takes you a while to skip by sevens, it might be that your seven times table needs some work. So checking that and skip counting is a good way, if you're looking for ways that you can improve your mental math skills and learn your times table, practice that. Find a friend, have a race. Have a race. Start at 8, go to 80. Who can go the fastest? And that will really practice your times table. Factors. A number that divides into a num another number. 2 is a factor of 6. 3 is a factor of 6. 6 is a perfect number. Have you ever heard of perfect numbers? There are not that many of them. Perfect numbers are numbers whose factors, not including themselves, add up to that number. So for example, the factors of 6 are 1, 2, 3, and 6. And if you take out the 6, 1 plus 2 plus 3 is 6. 6 is the first perfect number. The next perfect number is 28. What are all the things that multiply to give you 28? The factors would be 1. You can divide it by 2. Can you divide 28 by 3? No. You can divide it by 4. You can divide it by 7. You can divide it by 14. And you can divide it by itself, 28. So 1, 2, 4, 7. 14 and 28 are the factors, and if you look at 1 plus 2 plus 4 plus 7 plus 14, what do we get? 21, 25, 27, 28. Ah, 28 is the next perfect number. All right, for tomorrow's class, see if you can find the next two perfect numbers. They're big. Yes. They get huge very quickly. A prime factor. We have factors of a number that divide it. We say that something is a prime factor when it's a factor, but also a prime number. And prime numbers are numbers that are only have one and themselves as factors. One get into big arguments with this. People get into big arguments with the number one. Is one a prime number? The answer is no. The definition of a prime number is its factors are one and itself, and those two numbers have to be different. So the 
only factors of one are one and one. That isn't two things. That's only one thing. One is special. It's its own, does its own thing. It's very special, but it's not considered a prime number. So the first prime number is 2. 2 is the only even prime number. And then you get your other prime numbers after that. How fast can you list all the prime numbers from 1 to 100? Gets a little, it gets the brain going after, after, after 13. And then we get into the prime factorization, which I showed you earlier. We did the prime factorization of 12 of 144 when we broke it down as far as we could to 2 times 2 times 3 times 2 times 2 times 3. That was the prime factorization of 144. Here's the prime factorization of 24. Choose two things to break it up. And then ask, can you break those ones up even further until you are left with only prime numbers. When we're left with only prime numbers, we have three twos and a three all multiplied together. Have you seen exponents before? Right? So two times two times two, you could write as two cubed. But once you get the prime factorization, which is right here, this is where you can easily figure out anything that multiplies to 24. Okay? We already listed 4 times 6. Can you see that if you put the three twos together, 2 times 2 times 2, that's 8. You could have 8 times 3. Can you see if you kept the 1, 2 by itself, and I put the other numbers together, I get 2 times 12. And of course, you always have 1 times something is a really easy thing to multiply. But it's interesting because sometimes people forget it because when I give you a puzzle like this, two numbers that multiply to 22 and add to 23, what are the two numbers that multiply to 22 but add to 23? The two numbers are 22 times 1 and 22 plus 1. But sometimes the times 1 is the last thing we think of because it seems so easy. And this is our first topic in our first unit, which is prime factorization. We're going to do this one with a factor tree. We've done it on the board already just with breaking things up. I, I like the way that we did it on the board where we just broke it up. But I'm going to show you something called a factor tree, which basically says you take 144 and split it up to two things that it multiplies by. In this case, you can start with 12 times 12. The only one I would say not to ever pick is 1 times 44 because you're back to the beginning. Then, after you've done it once, you say, can any of these numbers be broken up further? And it won't matter, okay? Now, usually what's going to happen is whatever you break it up, you probably do the other one the same. But some people are going to pick 4 times 3, and some people are going to pick 6 times 2. Those are both easy ones to see. How many people saw 4 times 3 first? How many people saw 6 times 2 first, right? So normally you'd probably pick the same thing. But if you picked different, what we're going to find out is in a factor tree, the answer is going to be the same even if you pick different numbers along the way. Once I have 4 times 3, 4 is the only one that you can break up more. 3 is now a prime factor. But 4 I can break up to 2 times 2. The 6 I can break up, the 2 is already done, so the 6 I can break up to 3 times 2, and it wouldn't matter if you wrote 2 times 3 or 3 times 2, same thing. 
once you are done your factor tree, and they're all prime factors, circle all the ends of the tree. And you can write them out. We have 2 times 2 times 3 times 3 times 2 times 2, which is the same as 2 to the 4 times 3 squared. And we've broken it up. I sort of did the factor tree on the board before without doing the arrows. I just started with 12 times 12. I broke one of them up. I broke more of them up until I broke them all the way down to their prime factors. If something is down to their prime factors, you can rebuild it and find all sorts of things, right? For example, I'll circle these three. If you multiply those three in green, what would you get? 18 times by what's left? 2 times 2 times 2. 18 times 8. And now you have another number that makes 144. So prime factorization can really help you in your mental math for seeing what multiplies to get a number. So here's one for you to try. It starts off really big. Oh. If you have a really big number like this, chances are your times table never went up to 2,646. So chances are you don't have in your head two things that are multiplied right away. You have the answer already? That's good. Hold on to it. Okay. But. A good way to start is, can you cut it in half? Yes. So I'm going to go 2, and cutting this in half, I'm going to get 1,323. Oh, I want to do this together. Are you okay if we do it together? Or do you want to do it on your own first? Do you want to, want to try it on your own? You can use a calculator. No? You want to do it together? Can you see that this next one can't divide by 2? So if you had a calculator, what would be the next number you would probably try? 3. Does 3 work? It does. Oh. 3 works. When you divide by 3, do you, do you get 441? Yes? Yes? Okay. I'm just, I don't have my calculator. I'm just mental mathing. Just double check. Something super cool math-wise. You had your calculator. So chances are after two, you would try three. If two didn't work, does it make sense that four won't work? Because four is even as well. So if you could divide by four, you should be able to divide by two. So after trying three, probably the next thing you would try is 5, okay? But I want to talk a few things about how to tell you can divide something. Did everybody know that if it is an even number, you could divide by 2? Do you know the trick for dividing to see if the number is divisible by 3 just by looking at it? Seven. The sum of the numbers is divisible by 3? Yeah. So what he's saying is if I add up all the digits, 1 plus 3 is 4, plus 2 is 6, plus 3 is, if I add up those digits, I get 9. If the number that it adds up to, you can divide that number by 3, you can divide the whole number by 3. Really cool. The mathematical proof for it, a little bit beyond grade 10. But it might be something you want to look up and say, why does that work? And there's explanations on YouTube that are great. This is also true for nines. The fact that you could add this up, you can divide by 3, you can also divide by 9. This means this number could have been divisible by 9 as well. Second one, look at 4 plus 4 plus 1. Can you see that still adds up to 9? 
So I can divide it by 3 again. And this time I get 100 and, what is it, 147? Is that right? Someone have a calculator? Yes? And you could have divided it by 9 as well because it worked. Right? The nice thing about dividing it by 9, okay, what we're doing here is we're doing a technique where we're getting the smallest number, but sometimes if you can divide by a bigger number, your mental math becomes easier quicker. If I add these up, those numbers add up by 12, which means I can divide by 3 again. Okay, and this time it comes out to 49. And then once you get to 49, here's hoping you see your times table. Does anyone know two numbers that multiply 49? 7 and 7. Seven and, seven. and can you see that 7 and 7 are both prime numbers? They can't be broken up any further. So if I circle all the ends of my branches, I find out that 2,646 is equal to 2 times 3 times 3 times 3 times 7 times 7. Which I could write like this. But what's really, again, I like mental math. What I find really cool about this is I could circle two things in here now. And I could be like 7 times 7 is 49. And this is 54. 49 times 54 is 2,646. And we didn't need a calculator for that. Which is pretty cool. <coughs> So prime factorization gives you some hints about how numbers work together and some of the fun things that numbers do. common factor of 126 and 144. We'll look at a couple of methods. One of them is going to use prime factorization. One of them is not. It's just going to list every single factor. And then you have to circle the biggest one that they have in common. All right. So we'll start with 126. I'll do it in blue. Okay. Obviously, 126 is 1 times 126. So 126 factors are, you can always divide by 1. Sometimes 1 is the greatest common factor. If two numbers are prime, then the greatest common factor between them would be 1. Next, can you divide 126 by 2? Yes. And sometimes we, it's 1 and 126, you can work backwards. If you divide it by 2, it's going to be 2 and 63. Can you divide it by 3? Yes. It's going to be 3 and 42. Can you divide it by 4? Yes. No. Oh. You try it on your calculator. You try 4, you get a decimal, right? You get 31.5 or something. So you can't divide by 4. What about dividing by 5? No. 
Try it on your calculator. Can you divide it by 6? Yes. So 6 is the next one. And then that will tell you the next one going backwards. It would be 6 times 21. Can you divide it by 7? Yes. If I divide it by 7, I'm going to get 7 and third. What do we get here? 7 and... 18, is that right? Can you divide it by 9? Yes. Divide by 9, what do you get? 9 and 14. I'm running out of room. I hope there's not too many more. Those numbers that you can't read, that says 9 and 14 in the middle. Can you do 10? No. 11? How about 12? 13? So once you get, so with the 9 and the 14, which are really small, once you get up to a number that's already there, you would know you're done. Okay? I hope you're starting to realize this will not be the fastest method. But it's the method that the brain would go to first when you don't have another technique. So then we would do the same thing for 144. And luckily, we did that earlier. So we can say 1 at 144 right away. We can say 2 and 72, 3 and 48. Four, is there four up there? Yeah, and 36. No five, no, yeah, six and 24. Can you do seven? No, we had eight and 18. And then nine and 16. Oh my goodness. I'm going to write 16 down here. And then 12 and 12. Oh my goodness. There's lots of them. This is method one. You list every single factor for every single number. Which is the greatest one that they have in common? Start from your way back. There it is. The greatest common factor is 18. So the question becomes, there must be a better way. And the answer is yes. Where do we use greatest common factor? You've used this idea before. Okay, If you had this as a fraction, 126 over 144, this isn't in the simplest terms. Probably what you would do if you had this is divide both by 2 to begin with. Is that the technique you would probably start with? You'd be like, I need to write this in simplest form. I can divide them both by 2. So I get 63 and 72. And then you look at 63 and 72. Is there any number you can divide both of those by? And at this point, you might see 9. If you divide this by 9, you get 7. This by 9, you get 8. So 126 divided by 144 is 7 eighths. If you wanted to go there directly, you could have divided by the greatest common factor of 18. Now, currently, with what we just did, that would be very slow. Did you see I got to 7 eighths really quickly by dividing by 2 and then dividing by 9? It would take a lot longer to list all the factors of 126, all the factors of 144, circle 18, and then figure out I should divide by 18. And now my mental math is hard because I don't know my 18 times thing. But it is something that could work. So now we're going to go to method two for a greatest common factor that is a little bit faster. We already wrote out the prime factorization for 144. It was 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 times 3 times 3. 
126. Well, I would maybe start with 2 times 63, and then 2 times 9 times 7. This is like a factor tree with less arrows. Just keep breaking up numbers until they can't be broken up any further. So here's the prime factorization of 144. Here's the prime factorization of 126. What do they have in common? Do they both have a 2? Yes. I'm going to circle that in purple. That's in common. Anything else in common? They have a 3. Two 3s. We can circle both of those 3s. Is that faster? I think so. When we look at the prime factorization and we circle everything that's in common, we can find the greatest common factor a lot quicker. So the prime factorization that we learned today, super important for that. All right, let's see, what should I try to think of a number? that I put together, and you have to find one on your own, okay? I'm going to give you one to practice. I'm going to give you 72 and 108. What is the greatest common factor of 72 and 108? Can you write out the prime factorization of both of them and see what they have in common? Here, I'll write them. I'm going to write them separately. in a second, but once you think you have an answer, you can look up and check the number in the top corner, see if you got it. This is how I would write the prime factorization of 72. I know it's 9 times 8. That's the first one I thought of. If you did 2 times 36, that's perfectly fine. But then 9 is 3 times 3, and 8 is 2 times 4. And then I can break up the 4 to 2 times 2. So it doesn't take me too long to write the prime factorization of 72. 108. I might start with this one and cutting it in half. 2 times 54. 54 is 9 times 6. 9 is 3 times 3, and 6 is 3 times 2. They have two threes here, two threes here. Two twos here, two twos there. Nothing else that's in common. So if I take that 3 times 3 times 2 times 2, I would probably go 9 times 4, and I get 36. 